Pop 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 persuadable. What is going on, boo boos? I have a dad joke real quick. I have a phobia of elevators, so I am taking steps to avoid them. <laughs> that wasn't that good. It's okay. So let's talk about this gameplay. So we are in day two in Japan. I am making the declaration that Japanese competitive gameplay is by far the funnest gameplay to watch ever since season two. If you are somebody in the Japan community, but you go and tell them that Persuade has declared the Japanese competitors as the funnest to watch. That is a thing. Spread it. Let them know. You know why I, I actually let me talk about the gameplay real quick. So this is a really cool strategy. Kiter is specifically kiting in an area that Dancer put all of their boxes in. And here's what's even better is that Dancer put these in spots that it's going to take a ridiculous amount of time to take them down under the pallet. Now he's going to have to go over here around the corner and puts it in a spot on the opposite side of church that will benefit camping or rather, sorry, kiting in this area. This is fantastic. Not only do they have the strategy down of kiting into dancers' boxes, but they have maximized exactly where to put the boxes at that portion of the map. Now, let me tell you something. This takes an incredible amount of practice. You got to remember that every map has different, obviously, aspects to it. You have to know exactly where the hunter is most likely going to go. The kiter has to know exactly how to kite to that area. It's another strategy of the old priestess strategy where you kite towards the portals, which is a, a very popular strategy all up until the recent koa, right? But that takes just an incredible amount of time. You have to know how to maximize every aspect of every portion of the map. I, it's just fantastic work. Now, Dancer has been used consistently since Koa 2 in tournament gameplay, but very rarely. Consistently rare. <laughs> we saw GR use this in Koa 2. Dancer's always had it, the little trick shot version to throw hunters off in competitive gameplay, right? For those who don't know, that's sort of a strategy where you're, you're picking something that is normally not utilized to throw someone else off. Uh, for instance, in Koa 2... I think it was Koa 2. It may have been Koa 3, actually. I think it was Koa 3. I, I think it... I can't remember which uh, clan it was, but they used uh, they used Geisha on Leo's memory. It was like the only folks to use Geisha. And the idea is a lot of these competitors are not consistently practicing against Geisha. Therefore, we're going to use them to throw them off. So that's where Dancer's role comes into play. Now, I don't know... If Dancer has reemerged as part of the meta since I've been gone from the game for quite a bit. But either way, it just really shows some good coordination. And Dancer, in my opinion, the two biggest weaknesses against the Dancer would be, I guess you could say, Sculptor to a degree. In competitive, I mean, in tournament gameplay, not as much because you consistently know where the spawn points are and where that Sculptor's going. But you can you can really punish a Dancer with a sculptor if you use it correctly. But I'd actually say that Dancer's biggest weakness is and has always been Bloody Queen. I don't care how good of a Dancer player you are. A good Bloody Queen that puts that mirror directly on you. It don't matter if you already put your boxes down or not. See, the thing is, is that if you play in a regular rank mode, Dancer's always been different from tournament gameplay. In a rank mode, if you put a box down... Just in case you get like a Wu Chang that umbrellas right on top of you, you have a little bit of escape option from him. Or if a bomb bomb comes in the area, you have increased speed, hopefully, to reduce the ability for him to hit you with the chain bombs. All right. But Bloody Queen has always been a just always has been a counter. It doesn't matter if you put the boxes down, if they mirror right on top of you. Because of the hitbox, they're going to get you. So what I find very interesting about competitive gameplay right now is that now that you have people who are, call me the clerk, playing her, playing other, I think I've seen Naid, I've seen Photographer being played at one point, not necessarily in the Japanese uh, gameplay. Uh, I, I have to review game uh, day one and day two. But it just, it, it, it's like, wow, 
this is allowing new survivors, not, I shouldn't say new, but different strategies to reemerge. And it's going to be interesting how a lot of these characters are countered. And especially, you know, these competitors know each other. They know who is main and who. So that's another factor that we have to take into consideration. All right, my bad. My family came home, so I had to cut that mic. So now I'm, I'm hiding in my car. <laughs> Man, it sucks living in a small house with family because I'm on vacation right now. So, and, and again, the reason why I'm not just doing a play-by-play a -play -play on every little tiny thing we're seeing. First of all, you all have eyes. Second of all, I've been gone, so I'm not going to talk about a bunch of shit that I, I don't know. Um, but this dancer has been playing fantastic, and I thought that that was a really fun, interesting strategy. This is the sort of fun strategies that you see on the Japanese server. But once again, I don't know if this has been like a, a new popular strategy. I know that it's always been utilized since Koa 2, but it's not like it's been utilized by a lot of teams. So Now, this is what I find very interesting about how... The, I'm pretty sure this is round one. So what I find interesting about this strategy here is that they're not just going to go for the three-person escape. Now, this hunter has detention. All right. And this forward has got some big balls because he's actually going to position himself for a rescue, which I find hysterical. So... They're like, fuck this. We want, look at this. Look at that timing. It's going to set this team up for a potential four person escape. What a ballsy decision. Now, look at this. He's trying to use that big old ass. <laughs> Can you imagine? Can you imagine he has a shout caster? Yeah, using Clark, <laughs> using Clark's big ass to try. <laughs> And you can see now forward just has to try to get out. Now, remember, this is round one. They, they didn't have to do it. Well, you always have to do it. But, you know, it's not like it was a life or death decision. Uh, very interesting gameplay. Well done.